It is good to see everyone this morning. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. I'm dealing with this yearly problem of allergies, so I'm, I'm uh, having a little bit of a muffled voice, so bear with me. <clears throat> uh, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, about, about 10 o'clock, uh, Jennifer's grandfather passed away. And so we appreciate all of your prayers on in behalf of him. And uh, we, are, we are happy, based upon the promises of God, uh, Psalm 116 and verse 15, blessed in the sight of the Lord or, the, or precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Uh, he lived a faithful Christian life, and so we have a hope uh, that the world does not have. And so we do not grieve as the world grieves when something like this happens. So we uh, appreciate your prayers. We think the fr- funeral is going to be in Gun Barrel City and it's going to be Wednesday of uh, uh, this week. Uh, also, on the table, there is a new track, and we use this for evangelistic purposes. It's called My Preacher Says. And what it does, it compares some of the modern-day preaching with what the Bible actually says. You hear a lot of people say, My Preacher Says. Well, this compares what, what is being preached today with what the Bible actually says. So we're going to keep a supply of them here, and therefore we can use these for uh, spreading the gospel and trying to show that what's being preached in most places is not what the Bible actually teaches. And so we're going to keep a supply of those available for the purpose of handing out to people. Put off and put on. One of the wonderful things about being a Christian is not only the hope of heaven, not only being in a right relationship with God, but the change that is made for the better. The fact that when we become a Christian, we become better people. And when we do that, we have to put off and we have to put on. It's not enough just to put off, as we will see a little bit later on in our lesson. It's not enough to put off bad things. We also have to put on good things. And so in becoming a Christian, it betters us. It improves our life. We not only have a right relationship with God, but it improves the quality of life, not only in our family, not only in our workplace, but in our society and in our nation as a whole. Put off and put on. I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. You see here, when we we sin, we find ourselves in a lost condition. We're, We're dead in sin. We are without hope. Romans 3.23 makes it clear that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have committed lawlessness. 1 John 3 and verse 4. We have violated God's will through our own choosing. When we do that, we die spiritually. Spiritually, Ezekiel 18 and verse 20. Our sins separate us from God. Isaiah 59, verse 42. We don't have to be concerned with Adam's sin because we don't inherit his sin. We're not guilty of original sin. We're guilty of our sin. And because we have sinned and violated God, find ourselves in a lost, dead, hopeless condition. Jesus came into the world to give us life. Jesus came into the world so that we can put away the old, unsaved condition and enter into a new life with Him. So when a person believes that gospel message and they make that great confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, they are to repent of all their sins and they are to repent and be immersed in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and they shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So a person is immersed into Christ in the waters of baptism. It is a grave. Romans 6 verses 1 through 6 makes it very clear, as Paul is talking to the Christians at Rome, he says to them that you were buried with Christ, you were united together in the likeness of His death, You shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You are raised to walk in newness of life. 
Therefore, it is in the burial of baptism, immersion in water, that we arise to a new life in Christ in which we are new, we are saved. And sometimes this whole process is summed up with one word, faith. That one word summarizes the whole plan of salvation and the whole Christian life. And it refers to all the things that we do <coughs> excuse me, in response to uh, God's will. So we see here that we are arised from that watery grave into a new life in Christ. The very fact that it is a new life in Christ indicates change. When you get a new car, there's a change. You get new clothing, you get new shoes, there's a change. Something's different. And therefore, this new life in Christ indicates a new way of thinking. Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 and 28. For you are all the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were immersed into Christ have put on Christ. As Paul is writing the Galatian letter to the churches of Galatia, fighting the false teaching of Judaism, he makes it very clear that salvation is only in Christ. Not in the law of Moses, but in Christ. And he makes it very clear in Galatians 3 that the law of Moses has been done away. We are under the new system of Christianity, the gospel. And as a result of that, by faith we become children of God. They are children of God by faith. When did it happen? For as many of you as were, that's when it happened, immersed into Christ, have put on Christ. When the Galatians were immersed into Christ, they put on Christ. Now we know this is not literal. You don't literally put on Christ. But what this means is something spiritual. We put on a new way of thinking. We are to behave like Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, Paul makes it abundantly clear, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we are to imitate Christ. We are to imitate the apostles as they were imitating Christ. And as we do that, that denotes a change. We're not to think the way the world thinks. We're not to act the way the world acts. We're not to react the way the world reacts. We're not to treat one another like the world treats each other. And therefore, there's a change in our thinking, a change in our behavior, because now we have put on Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So we see that Paul here is talking about being in Christ. We've already seen how you do that. You believe and obey the gospel. Culminating in water baptism. And as we arise, we're now in Christ. We are a new creation, a new person in Christ. The old things have been passed away. The sins of the past are gone, washed away by the blood of Christ. And behold, all things have become new. That relates not only to our relationship to God, our status before God, but also our behavior. The way we act. The way we think. All things have become new. We look at things differently. We're going to look at things the way Christ would have us because we have put on Christ. We are now in Christ. Colossians 3. <clears throat> Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2. Alluding back to the concept of baptism found in Colossians 2.12. In Colossians 2.12, Paul says this, Buried with Him in immersion, baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead. Buried with Him in immersion. Then Paul goes on to say, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. You don't think 
like the world thinks anymore. You have been risen with Christ. A spiritual resurrection has taken place. When you read John chapter 5, Jesus talks about two resurrections in John chapter 5. The first one is spiritual, and the second one is literal at the end of time, when all that are in their graves will come forth, both good and bad. But the first one, he says, is those who hear his voice will be raised up. That's referring to spiritual resurrection. And so if we've been raised with Christ in obeying the plan of salvation, we are now to set our minds. We are to rethink our, mind, our, our minds in a realm of spiritual things now. We are to think biblically, not worldly. A change has taken place. As a result of that, we are to put off. We are to put off, and then we are to put on. Colossians 3, verse 8 and 9. (coughs) Excuse me. Colossians 3, verse 8 and 9. But now you yourselves are to put off. Now, as Paul is writing to the Lord's church at Colossae, he's reminding them there is bad behavior you don't want to be involved in. You're to put that off. We've all been involved in that bad behavior to one degree or another. But the very fact that he is saying, put it off, indicates that we can. We can change. We can put it off. We can make the changes. We can allow the Word of God to have an effect in our life. If we have humility and we're willing to do what it says. Put off all these things. Anger wrath. It is very clear that that anger and wrath has been the result of so much sin. Ephesians 4 and verse 26 says, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. It's not wrong to be angry. Jesus got angry. You read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see Jesus got angry from time to time. But he didn't sin. Anger can lead to sin. And that's what we must be careful of. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down in your wrath. How many relationships have been severed? How many uh, people have been hurt emotionally, even physically, even to the point of death as a result of anger and wrath? Ever heard of road rage? You ever experienced road rage? (laughs) It's because people get angry. And it results in sometimes people getting physically hurt or even killed because their anger shoots out of control. And he says, put this off. Also, malice and blasphemy. You put this off. Malice is hatred. It's hatred. Blasphemy is speaking against God. It is to profane holy things. And therefore, we are to not to be blasphemous. And not only you're not only blasphemous when you make fun of or hear things as far as cuss words that involve the name of Jesus, that involve the name of God. That is blasphemy. But it's blasphemous to claim to be a Christian and live like the world. That's blasphemy. That's hypocrisy. And so we have to put that off. Malice, this hatred, and blasphemy. Filthy language out of your mouth. Put this off. How many times do you hear people who claim to be Christians and they just spout off all kind of foul language? I used to work with people like that. And, and they, they want to be thought of as Christians. And they are surprised that you don't talk like they do. And, and they don't understand that the Bible says you're to put off filthy language, obscene language, some translations say, out of your mouth. You're not to speak that way anymore. Remember, why? Because your mind is different. Because Christ wouldn't talk that way. And therefore, we're to put it out of our mouth. We need to be careful, and this falls on me as well, what television shows and movies that we watch. If you don't have a filtering system on your DVD player or on on your TV, your satellite system, and you're letting all kind of foul language enter into your house and your children's hearing that, that's going to have an effect on them. We not only must not speak the foul language, 
we must not let it into our house as well. Put off the filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Put off lying. Don't be dishonest. Speak the truth. Don't lie. You are to be honest with one another. The Bible makes it very clear that all liars are going to have their part in the lake of fire. And I think the word all is there to indicate that lying is a serious matter. Sometimes we don't take lying seriously. But we have to understand that people who are liars will be in hell with murderers and rapists and the most wicked people that you can come across. Therefore, we have to put off lying. Since you have put off the old man uh, with his deeds. He's saying, look, there's been a change of behavior. You have put off the old person with his works. Put this off. Here's what you to put on. There cannot be just a void. It's not enough to say, well, I don't do those bad things. What are you putting on? You've got to fill that void with goodness. Colossians 3, verses 10 and 11. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. You put on the new person. Remember, we're a new person in Christ, renewed in knowledge according to the image of Him who created Him. Where do we learn about the image of Him in the Bible? Talking about God's Word. So if we want to have our character in the image of Christ, our behavior in that image, we're going to have to have the knowledge of God's will to do that. Hosea 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I believe that's why there is some, so much worldliness among God's people in the United States of America. They don't have the knowledge that what certain things are, are wrong. That the behavior is wrong. That it's immoral. The reason why it's not preached against anymore. <clears throat> and church discipline is lacking as well. So we see we're to put on this new man, and it's renewed in knowledge. The knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And in Christ Jesus, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all. We're all one in Christ. There is not to be a hierarchy, a social status within the body of Christ. We're equal. Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. Here's what we're to put on. Tender mercies and kindness. We are to have these qualities of Christ that, ha- that He had in Himself. Tender mercies and kindness in dealing with people who had heartache and problems in their life. Jesus had tender mercy and kindness toward them. The woman at the well in John chapter 4. When Jesus said to others, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That tender mercies and kindness that Jesus had, we are to have that towards one another. Humility, meekness. Jesus is the ultimate example of humility. Philippians chapter 2, he was equal with God. But he became a man that he might die on the cross. That's humility. He humbled himself. Meekness doesn't mean weakness. Meekness means power under control. And therefore, we see that someone that is powerful is not to become weak, but they are to become weak. They're to become meek in the sense of having that power under control. Self-control. Long-suffering Bearing with one another. We have let long suffering and being willing to bear with one another. All of us have faults. All of us are with, have certain flaws in our character and what we do. And we are to help one another as we put on these characteristics. And we are to put on the attitude of forgiveness. Forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another. 
that attitude of forgiveness that Christ has towards us, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Jesus was motivated by love perfectly in everything He did, and He is our greatest example. When He was healing the sick, when He was blessing the little children that were blessed, they were being brought to Him, and saying, of such are the kingdom of heaven, that was love. And when He went into the temple and He overturned the tables, that was love too. When Jesus preached and said, come unto me, I will, I will bless you, I will save you, I will bring you salvation, that was love. And when Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, woe to you hypocrites, you brood of vipers, that was love too. We have to understand that all this is encompassing in love. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of of perfection. And Jesus exhibited this in perfection and left an example for us in the gospel accounts. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. Put off and put on. You put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we are to put off our former conduct, which grows corrupt. It's according to our lust about how we feel, about what we think, what we want to do. He says, you put that off and you renew the spirit of your mind. Again, that comes from knowledge. And you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. <clears throat> put off and put on. If we're going to be the people God wants us to be, we're going to have to put off worldly behavior. We're going to have to put on these characteristics of Christ and follow Him, for He is our example. Perhaps there is someone here this morning that needs to put on Christ in baptism, <clears throat> if you believe in Christ with all your heart, you're willing to make that great confession, you're willing to repent of all your sins, we can immerse you into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll put on Christ. Perhaps you're a Christian and you have engaged in some of the sins that we have read about and looked at in the Scripture. We urge you to repent. Put them off. That's what repentance means. Put off that behavior and put on the characteristics of Christ. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and sing.